is deeply honored uh, to be the recipient of the 2010 Robert J. Collier Award. We challenged the team to double the speed of a helicopter, but to retain all the attributes of the helicopter. Handling qualities, maneuverability, ability to save lives. This is not an incremental improvement. This is a real step change. It brings the helicopter into a totally new operational realm than it's ever been before. It's a helicopter with better low speed, maneuvering and handling qualities, better hover performance, and seamlessly goes to air speeds that no other helicopter could ever achieve before effectively. The X-2 performance was actually better than what we had predicted. Uh, when we hit the 250 knot milestone, we could have gone faster. We had more power to spare. The rotor blade design, the fairing design, the integral propulsion, all those things combined to make an aircraft that has pretty remarkable performance, and it's still very efficient. You're expecting to see the penalty paid in performance with either fuel flow or uh, maneuvering performance, and that didn't happen. Lower the nose. The lift to drag ratio is the highest in the industry. It's the highest of any rotorcraft in the world and that is a testament to the engineering that went into this aircraft. We have new main rotor blades, which are highly efficient, uh, very exotic, advanced uh, shape and all to the airfoils that reduce drag dramatically, uh, both when you're hovering and especially in high-speed forward flight. Here with this aircraft, again, the dual rigid coaxial rotor, that control input is proportionally and almost instantaneously transmitted to the control head. So I kind of relate its response to an F-16. You move the stick, you get an immediate response. Safety was a consideration in the design of every part. And then when it was all put together, we had to take that design before the Model Development Safety Committee so that for every phase of envelope expansion, we could convince them that what we were about to do had been properly prepared and that we had mitigated the risks to an acceptable level. Part of our ground rule from day one is that aircraft only flew and continued to fly when everything was operational, all systems were go. And I think that was a big factor in orchestrating our safety approach. Failure mode after failure mode were examined in the simulator. That was done so that Kevin could find out what the aircraft would do under those circumstances and practice recovering from it. I'm a prior U.S. Army medevac pilot and officer and flew numerous combat missions in different theaters and when I think back specifically to Desert Shield and Desert Storm and look at what I was flying and what I needed to do to respond to a wounded soldier or recover that wounded soldier to an evac hospital, I really am pretty proud of what potentially the X2 technology is going to bring just to that mission alone. It wasn't all about product innovation, it was about process innovation as well. While we went 250 knots, we also asked the team to go fast. The result was an unprecedented 17 flights, 17 flight hours, and 250 knots. We handpicked a very small team of new engineers, tech fellows, and folks in the middle of their career. Uh, combined them with an extremely interesting project and then allowed their dedication and their enthusiasm to take over. This is why we become engineers, is to create something new that never existed before, that does things nothing else can do. I think that every employee, 18,000 of us, carry the legacy of Igor Sikorsky, who was really one of aviation's 
true first and most innovative pioneers. It's an honor, but it's also our responsibility to continue that aviation spirit. We've done it by winning the 2002 Collier for the S-92 helicopter. We've done it by winning the 2010 Collier for the X-2 Demonstrator. We're going to do it again by building the S-97 Raider, and we're not done yet.